8% Nation. I'm Cody Askins, and I have the distinct pleasure of interviewing one of my new favorite people, Mr. Eric Friero. Eric, welcome to the show, buddy. Thank you so much, Cody. Dude, I appreciate you allowing me to interview you. I appreciate you taking a few minutes out of your busy day. I know AEP is just around the corner, so thank you for your time. Yeah, man, absolutely. It's it's a crazy time right now, but this is this is what we all live for. No it's doubt. Crazy about blitz. It. No doubt about it. Eric Fierro is the founder of MedicareSupplementUniversity.com, which I want to go ahead and state is it's a it's a Medicare training site to help independent brokers that are looking to break into the Medicare business. Medicare can, can be it can be confusing. It can be overwhelming. There can be a lot of moving pieces and parts. So being able to jump in to something like this to help you learn the Medicare business from a seasoned vet. It's going to help. It's going to help a lot. So, so that's uh, also, I want to mention real quick too, believe it or not, Eric is giving free lifetime access to his Medicare supplement university right now at Medicare supplement university.com. Dude, you're nuts for doing that, but I love it. Yeah. I'm getting that a lot. I'm getting that a lot. Oh man, you're leaving a lot of money on the table. I can't believe you're doing this, but um, yeah, man, I'm, I'm really, I think what I'm after is more, I, I say in the actual intro video, when you go to the, to the main page is that I, I'm after legacy, you know, I, I want to get to the end of my life and I want to know that I really did help thousands of people. And even if it's in a little way, a big way, whatever way, um, if I was able to influence in any kind of way to, to help someone towards their, whatever their idea of success is, then I'm going to be a very happy guy. And, and even though, you know, I've spent, I spent a couple of years putting this site together and, and, and the site's going to continually evolve evolve, you know, because I think the original intent was always to just replicate myself. Uh, you know, I, I've spent a lot of time training agents. And so I wanted to have a platform where agents could go in and train with me still, but do it in a different way. And, and that way I could help more people on a bigger scale. And so uh, since then, though, it's been evolving and, and will continue to evolve. And, and this is just part of that evolution, becoming just something that I'm going to start offering completely free. Completely. That, that's amazing, buddy. Dude, you can tell you have a big car. You can tell you care. You can tell, can, you can tell deep down, you can tell that you're like, you're the dude that sincerely wants to help other people, which is one of the biggest reasons why we've got you involved in this conference. For those that don't know, Eric is going to be on the Q&A live panel as a panelist speaker at Nissan Stadium on the same stage as Grant Cardone and Ray Lewis and all these other industry guys. And I'm telling you what, he's got a lot of knowledge to bring. So make sure that you grab him, you pick his brain and you get a chance to talk to him, ask him some questions. That's the cool thing. All, all those little side conversations that'll happen. But for yeah. those that don't know Eric, dude, why don't you give him a little background about you and who you are real quick now? Yeah. So, you know, I, my story, I could go all the way back because I feel like I, I, I myself, I, I love my story, but I'm going to give you the short version of it. I'm going to start from when I just entered into the Medicare field. Um, you know, I was actually a finance manager for University of Phoenix. I had a team of 20 people working under me and, and I was doing really good climbing the ladder there, but I wasn't happy with what I was doing. I didn't really enjoy it. And, and I, plus I wanted a place where I could make more money. I wanted, I didn't like climbing the ladder and trying to, uh, you know, get raises so that I can make more money. I wanted a place where my income will be directly reflected by how hard I work. Mm -hmm. And there's no better place you could do that than in the sales world. And so the next check mark I had to tick off is I wanted to work somewhere that was kind of, that was more recession proof. So that, you know, if something if something bad happens, if we have, you know, a dip in our in our economy that that, you know, you look at the mortgage industry, you know, when we had the 2008 issue, man, a lot of mortgage lenders, they were having a lot of issues. But um, I just kept growing. My income kept growing throughout that whole season. And and that's really one of the other factors I was looking for. I wanted something recession proof. So, um, you know, I, I have a buddy that uh, he's one of my best friends named Tegre Moot. Uh, he's uh, the C CMO for Heartland Financial Group. What a uh, good dude, man. What a good dude. I love Tegra. He, he's the best, man. He is absolutely the best. And um, he was actually in the Medicare business. He was, he's was he been doing this since 2001, I believe. Um, so he was, he was marketing. He was working for an FMO. And he said, hey, man, you've been selling the wrong products. I want you to try to sell Medicare. Um, just do this part time. You know, keep doing what you're doing as a finance manager, but run some leads see how you like it. And so uh, we got contracted and set up. This was like in 2006, got contracted with Medicare Advantage, Medicare Supplement. Uh, he was able to hand me down some leads. And it was it was at lunchtime every single day at work. I would lock myself in my office, make phone calls, 
set appointments for the end of the day, and then I would go and run them. And my first two appointments that I went and ran, I tanked. Um, I did a great job doing the presentation, right. but then what what had ended up happening is that the um, I was presenting to to the 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 per, the client's children. So the, wow. the, basically, the client was living with the children. The children, you know, they're they're already in their forties, fifties. And so they told they, they were like Eric, you did a fantastic job with your presentation, but uh, we're probably not going to actually get this. We'll probably stay with what we already have, but I have an opportunity for you. And then they went ahead and tried to recruit me into an MLM. And so I was like, really, just that hit hard. I'm like, come on, man. I was like, I'm sitting here trying to see if I can if I can get into this, you know. And they hit me with that. And so the next appointment I had that day was just a no-show. So I went knocking on their door and nobody was there. Nobody would answer. Nobody would answer my call. I was just, I was stuck. So uh, I went home that day. I called Ted Gray. I was like, dude, this, this sucked, man. This was a bad day. He's like, buddy, just promise me you'll give it another try. So I was like, all right. Next day I went in, lunchtime, made my appointments. After, after work, I went out to go run them. And then the next 10 sales in a row, closed them all. And, and so- <laughs> Yeah, man. So after that, it was just like I was on fire, man, I, because it's it's a combination of I feel like I'm a good presenter. I'm a good speaker. Um, I believed in the product and, and I love I love helping people. And I really felt that the products I was offering were actually helping people. And because that because of that, I was able to really just get behind it. And, and I think I had a lot of passion in it. And I and I really did care. So uh, it was great. And man, I'm telling you, I think that at that time, as a manager, man, you won't believe it. So as a, as a finance manager, I was making $28,000 a year. And so after two months of selling part-time, I damn near matched what I was making full-time as a manager. And I said, I got to walk. I'm done. This is it. You know, I, I can do this. I know I could do this full-time. Why am I wasting any more time here? Like, that's it, so cool. It, it, just, it was, yeah. So, so that's when I decided I was going to go. And, and so as I did that, uh, you know, as I decided to go full-time, Put in my walking papers and uh, and I and you know and I was just I was ready I was ready to go at it hardcore full time and then Tegra comes tapping on my shoulder he's like man we actually have an opportunity where you can come help me with marketing you know come join the, the FMO we're working for and let's start recruiting agents across the country training them getting them involved and and this was like again back in 2006 Medicare Advantage was just like ripe because you know the, all the changes that 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 happened with the Bush administration had just changed the rules so that it could just go gangbusters and it did. So it was just an insane time that uh, you know that I got into the into the whole marketing world as well. So so there I was, you know, I was selling, I was marketing and recruiting and training new insurance agents that wanted to get in the business, working with existing heavy hitters that were in the business. So you know, I've had a lot of amazing experience since then. So that puts you know, I think that's what thirteen years I think overall that I've been, um, you know, that I've been in the Medicare arena and and. I've just had such a great experience. I've got to work with a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of top level people in the insurance industry and not only from insurance agents, but also insurance carriers. You know, I have great relationships with a lot of the top guys at different companies. And that always helps, man, because when an insurance agent needs help, they need somebody who can get it done. And uh, and so that's that's really the, the biggest value that I brought to agents was not that I had fancy trips they could win or or that I had a bunch of free leads I could give them. It was just me. I was literally selling them on working with me and what I would do for them. And Ted Gray was always good at modeling, you know, because I always felt like I was a hard worker before I got into the Medicare world. Right. But when I saw Ted Gray, man, that guy's at a different level. Like that guy, he was taking calls at 10 at night. We'd be out, we'd be out having a couple of beers and he'd be taking calls at 10 at night from agents and answering questions. And so I ended up modeling that. And, and as a result, you know, that's, that's just, I think agents really appreciate that. If they can reach you at any time and you can start working on their issues right away, you alleviate stuff from them. And so that's been my world, you know? And so to wrap that up, what ended up happening at the beginning of the year is that the FMO I was working for got bought out. And so as a result of doing that, I basically had a decision. I could now join the new company that took over, or I could instead, uh, you know, try to, try to go out on my own. And so I decided to do the latter. I, I went out on my own um, and, you know, I, I basically I, I was talking with Tegri about the, the move I was going to make. And he's like, dude, why don't we see about partnering together so that you could basically open up a call center, you know, mm -hmm. uh, and, and that way. Because one of the things that, that, that Tegri always recognizes is that I love selling over the phone. 
Uh, I, I, I've been doing that since it, I, probably 2007. Uh, you know, that's I was able to to do a med sub sale over the phone, and I said I'm never leaving the office again. Like <laughs> <laughs> I'm just I, I just want to do this all over the phone because I did I, I was able to do just as good of a job, and so um, you know since then that's really when I was selling and marketing at the same time is because I was able to do it all from the office. So I could always juggle the two. Um, and so now, uh, you know, with me leaving the FMO, you know, he said, well, why don't we take this to another level? Like, let's, let's go full time hardcore at it. And so, yeah, so Heartland came in and they partnered with me so that I could start getting my, my place up and running. And, and, you know, now I have, uh, uh, we have actually, we've been growing really fast over the past several months. And so I think we're almost at, uh, we're, we're almost north of 20 agents now um, that, that we have uh, selling across the country. We have, uh, you know, call centers in, in four states. Uh, so it's just, it's been, it's been going pretty, pretty well. You know, we're just, it, we're growing fast. We have a great, great team behind us. And, um, and as you can see, as a result, supremely busy. <laughs> Dude, no doubt, man. That is such an amazing story. Thank you so much for sharing. That's really cool. What, what was it? What was for, for those agents out there? Because in this industry, there's about eight thousand ways to succeed, right? I mean, there's so many different avenues: P and C, life and health, Medicare, mortgage protection, filing expense. It, it's advantage. You know, it's what was it about Medicare for you that really attracted you? I think um, because I've I've sold in other arenas before too, and I feel that. It kind of for starters, the senior population is is one of the kindest that I've experienced. Uh, w one of the things I really loved about working with seniors is I love learning from people. I, you, you've heard that that saying that um, you know smart people learn from their mistakes, wise people learn from others' mistakes. And so I love when when seniors want to give me wisdom. I soak that in. I, I take that all in. And so I really have always enjoyed the wisdom that seniors have given me. And at the same time, because they've always had such a, a difficulty understanding the Medicare options, um, I really felt good. I think the teacher inside of me always felt good about being able to teach them how the system works. And and to me, they they have this look like they they feel more empowered when they truly understand how their insurance works. So I, I think the combination of all of that really is what what caused me to fall in love with the industry and and make it my career. It's such an amazing industry at that too. I mean, it's it, which is a lot of the reason why this conference and why we're putting this together. It's crazy to think that as an industry whole, about ninety two percent actually fail. And so with getting people like you involved giving away free lifetime access to a complete Medicare university is at Medicare supplement university.com is so, so, so impressive because people like you are the ones that are going to help change this industry, help improve that statistic. Uh, and so we're super, super excited to have you involved live Q and a and all that. So what was it about this crazy deal in 21 days, nine hours, 42 minutes and 38 seconds and counting at Nissan stadium in Nashville? What was it about 8% nation? They wanted you to get involved, man. You know, so a I always always love networking. Uh, that that is part of what I really enjoyed when I was working, uh, you know, for the FMO. That it was the networking that I got to meet other agents, share yeah. ideas, uh, talk about what's working, what's not working, and and you know, just to be able to share in each other's successes. You know, I, I think it takes um, it takes quality people to know that there's so much business out there. Oh. That it's just like I can't view people as competition. I just oh. I view that you know there's just so much business out there, and so the people who who have that same mentality, man, those people they click. And I think that this conference, that's what it's all about. People are going there to share knowledge, share what's working for them, share what's 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 going great in the industry, and maybe what we should stay away from, like the tips and tricks, man. And so to be able to network with other like-minded people like that. Uh, it, it's just an amazing deal, you know, and that's really what excited me is that a I get to network with other like minded, awesome people. B, there's going to be a lot of people there who want to ask questions, get more information. And I'm excited to, to help. I'm excited yeah. to help. And one of the biggest things I'm going to be able to say is, hey, go to Medicare Supplement University dot com. Exactly. You can get a lot of answers there. <laughs> exactly. And it's so, so, so true. I mean, there's so much knowledge. I mean, you talk about people don't realize it, dude. You were a seasoned freaking pro, you know. You've been in this business half as long as I've been alive. <laughs> like, I don't want to make you feel old, bro, but yeah, but you so just did. Man. You just did, <laughs> dude. But you clearly know what you're doing. Uh, there's so much knowledge and wealth that agents can get from you. That's what I love about stuff like this. 
is like you said, the networking is pulling valuable nuggets from different people. Learn something from Grant Cardone. Learn something from Ray Lewis. Learn something from Eric Fierro. Learn something from Vince Pompanato, Cody Askes, all, all these other guys, Justin Brock, all these, all these, all these amazing panel speakers, keynote speakers. It's just the the, the conversations we're gonna have, like. I mean, the conversations at the party, the conversations in the elevator, the conversations freaking backstage. I mean, it's going to be unbelievable. Uh, would you say that's probably the neatest thing in general? Absolutely. Absolutely. I think that, uh, you know, one of the biggest things I always want to stress to people, because you, you see those stories out there where people are like, I'm a self-made man. I'm a self-made man. I don't believe that. I, oh, there might be exceptions, right? There's always exceptions to the rule. But especially in this business or in many other businesses, you don't do it alone. You do it with the help of other people, whether that be from people supporting you, people giving you knowledge, people giving you access to tools, people teaching you different ways, systems, things like that. Like there's always help out there. And and so I think that that's one of the biggest draws to how awesome this is going to be is that, that everyone is coming together to understand that, hey, we're here because we want to learn from other people because we realize that in order to reach the pinnacles of success that we're after, we need to learn from others. And, and I'm still the same way. I'm a sponge, man. Like I, I, and I tell my guys all the time, I'm like, Hey, don't, don't ever see, think that you're going to see me sitting up here saying, Hey, just cause I'm the guy training you guys on how to sell all this that I can't learn. I learn stuff from people all the time. I learn from agents that I just brought on and I'll listen to how they're pitching. And I'm just like, huh, I actually kind of like how that flowed. I'm yeah. going to start using that pitch instead. And so I'll switch it. I'll switch it to what they're saying and integrate it into my pitch because I'm always learning from other people. So and I think that's a very key ingredient is you got to be willing to, to always learn from other people. I love that. And you mentioned something too, that, that I think a lot of is a, is a valuable nugget in this already is and you're not even on stage yet, but is, <laughs> uh, is, is the fact that you said there may be exceptions, but I really don't believe that anyone gets where they are without the help from at least someone along the way, uh, whether they want to admit it or not. Like we've, we've all got so many people behind us, helping us. You know, we've all got our people in our, on our team and in our corner and support systems and, you know, collaboration and meeting people. And, you know, I, this year I've been able to meet a real, a lot of success people in this industry. And I'm telling you what, I used to let my ego and pride get in the way and say, you know what, I'll figure it out on my own, man. But it's so much easier when you can just learn from other oh. people. And, and so, what I'm excited is what agents are going to learn from you at 8% Nation. Knowing your experience, knowing your tenure, knowing that you're going to be on the stage, not knowing what the questions are going to be yet, what do you expect that agents will learn from Eric Fierro just, to, just in your humble opinion and, and experience in general? Yeah, I think one of the things that, that I would want to stress and again, not knowing necessarily the, the mix, assuming that a lot of the people who are attending are final expense producers, but, you know, there could be other arenas as well. Um, I think I really want to express just how important it is to not be a one trick pony, um, mm -hmm. you know, because even in the Medicare world, man, that's prevalent. It's so prevalent that in the Medicare world, so a lot of a lot of agents just want to offer the supplement or the advantage plan. Um, and so to me. To make the most out of any lead, I think the best thing you could do is have several feathers in your cap. You know, so so our guys are trained on Medicare supplement, Medicare Advantage, final expense, uh, 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 hospital indemnities, um, dental vision hearing plans, lump sum cancer plans. Uh, we just we we want to be able to identify a need and have access to that product with any lead, so that we because man, at the end of the day, it still costs money. You know, and that's the biggest thing. Agents got to realize that, you know, in order to make money, you got to spend money, right? You got to spend money to make money. And so if you're going to spend the money, then you want to make the most out of those leads. And so the best thing that I, I could tell everybody is you, don't be a one trick pony, you know, make sure that you're well versed in several products so that you can make the most out of anything you're calling. And that's a, that's such good advice. I mean, I don't think agents realize how, how, how good advice that really is. But you also mentioned something too about spending the money. You got to spend it to make it, uh, why is it so hard in our industry for agents to be able to wrap their mind around that? Uh, because I think that's a lot, big reason why agents fail. It's fear. It's, it's the, because it is a risk when you're doing that, you're ponying up your own money and, and it might be at a time when, when you have other expenses that need to take care of, but, um, but it's the fear of having to take that risk. But 
it's really uh, part of that is you, you you can't get rid of fear. I don't think uh, it's always there. You have to do it in the face of it, and 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 that's going to come through positivity, mindset, believing in yourself, and then just doing it, doing yeah. it. So uh, because sometimes you just got to just set it out there and be like, well, let's see what happens and get <laughs> get ready, you know. But but that's really what I think hinders a lot of people is fear. It's Big fear time. because it is a risk. It is a risk to have to pony up your own money. Um, to back yourself up, you know? It really, really is. All right, I'm gonna throw a curveball at you. You ready? Okay. All right, so if you had to describe Eric Fierro in one single word. I've never asked this on camera, but you know what? I thought, you know what? I'm, I'm gonna throw a curveball at this guy because I think he can handle it. One word, you had to describe yourself, what would you say? Persistent. Persistent. Did you heard it here first? It takes some persistence to succeed in this industry, man. I love that persistent. Just a fighter, never gives up. Always comes back. Always gets back up when he gets knocked down. And how many times do we get knocked down in this business? I mean, it's a reality, man. It's a reality. And I think again, one of the biggest shifts that happened to me, um, there was two things. One of them is I I stopped chasing money, and instead I started chasing success. I started chasing whatever my idea of success was, and and I I promise you this, man. Ever since I started doing that, the money just came in, you know, and, and but as far as what my drive and desire are, you say that, man. I love that. I love that. Yeah, it's just, but and ever since, ever since doing that, it's just that my life has changed in such a positive way. And, and trust me when I tell you that I'm one of the back in the day, if you would have known me prior to my Medicare days, I was a negative Nelly, man. I was a negative Nelly. I was a, yeah, yeah. My wife, you could ask my wife, you know, and even still, I could still let it get the best of me and I could get grumpy and stuff, but I have to choose. I have to choose to be positive. I got too much riding on my shoulders to, to, to get negative, to believe that something's not going to happen. I just can't afford to do that. I have to stay positive. So I force myself to stay positive. And in the end I win. No doubt about it. You do because you're persistent. You never give up. You're knowledgeable. You know, it's like, dude, that's such a, that's such a great explanation. All right. So if agents are on the fence and I'm telling you, you want to meet this man, an 8% nation at Nissan stadium in Nashville, 21 days away. If someone is on the fence, 21 days, nine hours away, and they haven't bought their ticket yet, what's your pitch of why they should attend this deal? Yeah. And, well, and it's do this alone. You can't. So I think we lost you there for a second, but oh. yeah, there you're oh, we're back. Yeah, we're good. You're back. Okay. All right. So, so the biggest thing that you could take away from this is that you don't do this alone. You don't become successful alone. So people mm -hmm. are thinking, you know, especially in my industry, being the Medicare industry, they're saying, Oh, well, that's right in the middle of AEP. Well, it is, but what you give up in terms of a couple of days, you're going to be able to make up far far more in terms of your earning potential just from the nuggets of gold that you take away from everybody that's going to be there if nobody there like if no nobody that's listening to here knows who grant cardone is like that man is he just has money coming out of his mouth like he yeah. is he is he's amazing you know and it's really like man i could tell you i what really helped to change my life towards positivity is i got drunk on listening to to, to grant cardone gary v and russell brunson you know, Russell Brunson was huge in bringing me into the into the whole uh, digital marketing space, man. That guy was pivotal in bringing me because my right. background, I actually have a degree in computer networking. And up until up until maybe I would say two years into the Medicare world, I had no clue why I even got this degree. I, I all of a sudden I was so technology smart, but I had no reasons to use it. And then all of a sudden I was able to start implementing it. And then when I got into digital marketing, I was able to explode all that knowledge. And so now it's just like, that's, that's why you see the university exists. I do all my own video production. I do, uh, you know, I put together the website I, I did, you know, and, and I'm constantly doing technology things to help even in my own agency. I, I do all my own lead generation. I do, uh, you know, I, I just, I, I love technology and that's one of the best things that's happened here with, 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 I think our era that we're living in yeah. technology, you know, so, um, yeah. I know that a lot of these guys are going to have a lot of great things to share in terms of that. So I think coming to the conference is going to be huge to be able to pick up so much good stuff that you can immediately go back and put into practice. That's going to be huge. 
Plus, I know some of the guys that are going to be coming to this conference on the stage. They're amazing guys. In fact, Brandon Clay is going to be one of the speakers. <laughs> that guy is money. I love talking to that guy. So yeah. I'm telling you, man. Yeah, I think anybody who who's on the fence for what you give up in a day or two, you're gonna you're gonna 10 exit from the knowledge and all this stuff that you can actually implement from what you gather at this conference. Absolutely, no doubt about it. You heard it here first from Eric Fierro, man. I'm sold, man. You got me all jacked up and excited <laughs> for this thing, brother. Dude, hey, thank you very much for not only being a part of this conference, for being a part of us as a panel speaker live on stage, but also allowing me to spend a couple minutes with you during busy, almost AEP season to go over the kind of value you're going to bring. So thank you there very much. Absolutely. Thank you, Cody. You're, you're an amazing guy putting on all this stuff. I mean, you, you are, you are also, you're the epitome of ambition and, and hustle, man. So I love it. Thank you, buddy. Thank you very much. And for all those that are wondering, Hey, how do I grab a ticket to this before this thing is sold out? Go to 8percentnation.com. I promise you, you want to meet this man, Eric Fierro in Nashville, October 26th, 27th. Go to 8percentnation.com to grab your seat. Dude, thank you again for being on brother. All right. Thank you, man. Take care.